Hi, this is Mike with Actifio. This is part three of our three-part video series on how Actifio solves the copy data problem. In this video, we're going to talk specifically about how Actifio interoperates with different application environments. And there are really four different environment styles that we use uh, with the Actifio solution. Uh, the first two are very specific to technologies, VMware and Oracle. The second two are a little bit more generic and have broader application, and those are Windows, Linux, Unix integration, as well as something we call ESP, which is uh, external snapshot pools. So starting out with VMware, let's say we have an ESX host uh, or cluster, and on this cluster we have a virtual machine. There's really two things that you need to understand about all of these integrations. One is how we're going to capture the data. The second is how we're going to get the data back or use the data. Capturing the data with VMware is leveraging the VMware incremental and change block tracking functionality that just about everyone in the market leverages. To leverage it, we will integrate with a virtual center where Actifio will talk to the virtual center for orchestration, coordination, inventory. When we want to capture a VM, we'll tell the virtual center to please snap that VM and then tell us which blocks have changed. We will talk directly to the ESX host to retrieve those blocks of data. Now, within the Actifio solution, we will carve up a disk big enough to hold uh, the VMDK file for that VM, or multiples if there are multiple VMDK files, and we'll retrieve the, the data from VMware and we'll store them into this full copy, onto this virtual disk that we've created in the Actifio appliance. After we've completed the copy, we'll delete the VM snapshot through vCenter, and then we'll take a snapshot internal to the Actifio appliance here of that disk. Now, what we've just done is we've taken a VMDK file, a virtual disk file, and we've converted it into a virtual disk. This is an important distinction that comes into play when we want to use this data. But before we go there, let's finish the capture process, because after day number one, after the first backup job where we've captured the full copy of the data and created a snapshot, that snapshot is our backup. Then, when we repeat the process the next time, again, we call the virtual center, we take a VMware snap, we retrieve the change block list from the host, we update in place the blocks of data that have changed within this full copy in Actifio. Now, as that happens, the previous versions of that data get attributed, reattributed to the snapshot copy that's here. So the snapshot will effectively grow while the changes from the next job happen. And when we've got all those changes and we delete the VMware snap, we take another snap internally. This might be now day number one, this might be day number two. And this, this is our golden copy that we continuously update every time we run a job. This approach allows us to have an incremental forever capture for our VMware data, for the VMDK files, without ever having the need to reconstitute data together. We never have to go and say, where when was the last full and what are all the changes since and emulate that to look like another point in time, because we've already got it built into our infrastructure so that every snapshot looks like a full automatically with no performance degradation, whether you're looking at the most recent one or the oldest one. They're all available for immediate use. And how you use them is actually really interesting because if you want to recover data from a VMware backup into a VM, well, that's pretty easy. You tell us and we will present from that snapshot. We actually take a snapshot of the snap so it's safe and protected and read-write. And we'll present that into the VM and you can now access that data that represents a previous point in time. Or we can create a new VM and present the disk into there instead. We can even go so far as to say, if you've got a host that's a physical host, maybe your, your VM was a Windows server and the VMDK had Windows NTFS file system on it. What we now have in the Actifio appliance is a disk that has NTFS on it. It's not really VMware specific. So Actifio can present from that backup to a physical host and this host will simply see a VMFS or a, 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 an NTFS file system show up all the data on it that was backed up from that VM. So we've got some platform independence here that's come out of it. Naturally, you can recover the data instantly by doing one of these mounts. You also have the ability to recover the data um, back to an existing data store using something like VMware vMotion. The presentation here 
This can be fiber channel. This can be iSCSI. This can be NFS. Um, regardless of the fact that the, the data was captured through API layers, sometimes it can be captured even through fiber channel layers, um, it can be presented back through any one of these different means based on what your infrastructure is and, and what you prefer. Now, when we move beyond VMware and we say we want to look at Oracle, Oracle is similar to VMware in that it gives us some things automatically. For Oracle, we might have a database instead of a VM. The capture process for Oracle is a little bit different than VMware because what we actually do is we present up a disk that's been carved out from the Actifio solution that's big enough to hold our Oracle database. And then we instruct through our man to do an image copy. Now, an RMAN image copy is instructing Oracle to make a copy of this database onto this disk in a format that it turns into a runnable copy of the database. This isn't a backup. It's, it's very distinctly different than a backup because a backup can only be used for a restore. You can't do anything else with it. An image copy, it's a runnable copy of the database. You can use it. You can stand up the database and actually run it. And there's two reasons that this matters. There's the obvious reason. When I want to use the data later, it's much faster to use it if it's in the right format already. But the second reason this matters is because it also enables what we do next. And what we do next is incremental forever data capture. So on the first backup job, we present the disk and we do this image copy. We get the full copy. We take a snapshot of it, just like we did with VMware. But on the second day, we present back that full disk. And instead of doing an image copy, the second day, we do a level one incremental. And that's leveraging Oracle's change block tracking. Oracle does the incremental onto our disks, so we get the changes, and then we do a merge. And the merge is like doing an incremental restore at the time of the backup. It's only possible because the format of this data was an image copy to start out with. It's a runnable copy of the database. It's not a backup. You can't restore an incremental into a backup. You have to restore the backup first. We don't have to. It's already in the right format. So we can present this disk, do an incremental and a merge, and take it away. And now our copy looks just like the production source database at the time of that backup job. It's ready to be used. And we take another snap. And we can repeat this process day after day after day, multiple times a day, to get point-in-time versions of the database that are all immediately available. Now, in addition to this, Actifio will do archive log management, where we'll present a disk up for the archive logs, and we'll run traditional archive log backups onto that disk, along with uh, purge commands. And together, between the archive logs and the database images, now we have the ability to recover databases really, really easily. To recover a database, all we have to do is present whatever point in time image we want up to the server and stand up the database. We can give it a new name, give it a new SID, change whatever parameters that you like about it. We can even roll forwards the archive logs to a specific point in time that you, the user, choose. And the wonderful thing about this is you can instantiate this process all through the Actifio user interface. We're not just presenting disks that have the data on them. We're actually doing the Oracle work for you so that you don't need an Oracle DBA to recover an Oracle database. A QA person that wants to run some tests, a support person, a developer, can simply request the copy of the database from the system. It will present the disks and instantiate the database for them as they've asked for. Simplifying the process, eliminating some of the mundane tasks from your typical uh, Oracle DBA's life. Now, when you move away from Oracle, things change just a little bit, but certain fundamentals are always going to stay the same. The things that change are how we capture the data, because not every other database system is, a, is as advanced as Oracle. Not every system has uh, incremental merge or even incrementals. If you look at Microsoft SQL Server, it only has the ability to do fulls and differentials, which are not the same as incrementals, uh, and transaction logs. So what we do is we say, same concept, have a full copy disk that we present up to our server, but 
Now we are going to be the ones providing the change block tracking. So for example, in Windows, we will create a bitmap of zeros and ones that keep track of what is changing over time. So that when we go to run a backup job the first time, we present the disk up, we copy the full data set onto our disks. Now when I say copy, uh, if it's Windows, we'll leverage VSS in order to get a static, consistent point in time view of the data files. If it's SQL Server, the Microsoft SQL Server data files themselves. Um, if it's DB2, uh, Sybase on Linux, we do the exact same thing. We have a, a bitmap, we'll take, instead of a VSS snap, we'll take an LVM snap, and we'll copy from the source onto our disks the actual blocks from the volume or from the file. So what we are left with on the Actifio disk is a full copy of that disk volume or a full copy of the database files as they appear on the source. That means they're in the right format, they're runnable. And it means that day after day we can present that disk back, leverage the bitmap to copy just the blocks that have changed onto our disk, and then take the disk away and take another point in time snap. So it's incremental forever data capture where every point in time looks like a full, every point in time is usable. And for all these database engines, we have that same capability that we talked about for Oracle, where we can present the disk up and bring the database online. SQL Server, you can say, take this, these four databases from that instance and bring them up on that server in this instance and call them this or add this prefix or suffix, and we'll do that work for you. We'll roll forward the transaction logs. We have database log management for all these database platforms. Um, simplifying the process across the board, even when the underlying database engine doesn't always have all that advanced technologies. The fourth architecture here is what we call ESP, it's external snapshot pools. And external snapshot pools is really two different architectures in one. It starts out with an external storage array that's being managed by the Actifio system. Now this Actifio system might be hardware, it might be virtual appliance, might be a VM, doesn't matter which, it's going to manage this external storage array. And when we do this, option number one, we use this storage array to present the disks to our server. Instead of Actifio presenting it, the storage array presents it directly. This is one way to do things like leverage fiber channel, even when your implementation is running on virtual machines, for example. And because that's fiber channel, all that backup traffic now is fiber channel. Of course, this can be iSCSI. Um, we can do NFS in some scenarios, depends on the operating systems, for example. But the, the concept is the data goes directly from your server to that external storage array. The external storage array now has the ability to be, because it's managed by Actifio, Actifio can incrementally access the data on it in order to replicate it out to another location, to dedupe it, to send it to an Envault pool, whatever uh, the SLA calls for. The second architecture with external snapshot pools is your production data might be on this storage array already. This is your production array. And in that scenario, you've got a production copy of the, the data. All we have to do is take a snapshot of it. We'll talk uh, to the host, we'll quiesce the database to make sure it's app consistent. We'll take a snapshot on your production array. Now, everyone who knows me knows that I say snapshots are not backups. So what we'll then do is we'll take the snapshot, present it to the Actifio appliance, and the Actifio appliance can make a copy of it onto its own managed disks. It can replicate it, it can send it to object storage, it can do whatever you want so that you have a backup copy somewhere else. But your backup window can now be ultra short and your recoveries can be very fast. You can use these snapshots for test and development or you can use copies from other Actifio pools for that test and development to isolate those workloads. Both of those options are available with the, the ESP solution. I hope this was informative. The three-part series talking about what is copy data and why does it matter, talking about how Actifio under the covers manages different pools of disks and has SLAs, and then this video talking about how we integrate with different application environments. Thanks for your attention. We'll see you again soon.